Welcome to The God Room with Danny Hobble. Danny's art ministry has touched millions of people around the world. For the past four decades, Danny has shared his talent by spreading the Word of God through art. Join us now as Danny shares his inspiration behind the talent in The God Room. Hi, welcome to The God Room. We're glad to have you back again. Mm -hmm. um, today, what I'd like to talk to you about is KISS. And get that, that's an old acronym. Um, actually, I, I looked it up this morning on, on the internet, and what they were saying is it actually came from an engineer. Really? Back then, yeah, back in the uh, late 50s and 60s, an electrical engineer, I mean, uh -huh. a big engineer. And he used to use that, and he used to tell himself that all the time. And what um, KISS came from, and a lot of people have heard this using the KISS uh, acronym, I guess you call it. K-I-S-S. Um, is Keep It Simple Stupid. <laughs> so that's what <laughs> now, you got in your God room today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, God, I, I don't think I would call him <laughs> stupid, but he was saying, you know, Keep he it simple. You know, once, uh, okay. the, the simplicity is an important thing that yeah. he wanted to get across to me. And I got this, um, again, usually um, I have my God room when I go to um, get up in the morning mm -hmm. and grab a cup of coffee and uh, go outside my back porch and just sit there and uh, talk with the Lord and make sure that I spend time. When you do that, when you spend your time with your, in your God room and you're quite a long time with the Lord, um, Make sure you give enough time to be quiet and mm -hmm. and listen to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, well, I, I've said it before, but I mean, it's, we have a tendency to just keep yakking. You know, Lord, I need this, or what about this, or da da. I mean, even if you're just telling the Lord about your day, which is a nice thing, you like to hear that. Um, still, we don't spend the time to just be quiet and still and listen. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to be doing something, listening to something. Anyway, so, uh, but this morning, instead of doing it with my cup of coffee on my back porch, uh, I did it when I was waking up this morning. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I woke up and I was, you know, waking up, but I didn't get up out of bed. I was still just waking up. And then, you know, as I'm waking up, I'm, you know, just talking to the Lord and mm -hmm. saying, morning, Lord, how you doing? Da, da, da. We're just having a talk. And then he gives me this thing with with uh, with uh, what he wanted me to say today, Good. and it was the kiss thing. Now, the whole thing about keep it simple, and we'll just call. Oh, let's let's yeah, just do this. We'll call it kiss with, with the silent s. Yes. So we'll just All call right. it keep it simple. We won't put the stupid on the end of it, <laughs> but just keep it simple. Um, there's probably nobody who knows that better than the Lord Himself. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, we, uh, as people, you know, we, we came up with, God came up with, with the simple plan, mm -hmm. you know, uh, accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you're going to save. I mean, that's, it's as simple as that. And yet, we as humans, as people, because, I, th I think it's because our whole life, we're just used to everything that, that we do or obtain, uh, we have to earn. That's you have true. to earn a living, right. you have to earn respect, you have to earn the love, you have mm -hmm. to, I mean, you know, it's things that we do that we earn whatever it is that we mm -hmm. receive. And so when somebody s tells us, well, you don't have to do anything, Jesus already did it for you, all you have to do is accept it, it, it doesn't register in our heads. It's like, it's, it's got to be more to be true. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it has to be more complicated. Right. There's got to be more to it than that. Nothing, you know, as they say, there is no free lunch. Yeah. Well, and Jesus, like, there is a free lunch. Um, but so we come up with religion. Right. And, you know, religion is just, let me read this. This was great. I can't, again, this morning I came up and I go, oh, I got to read this this morning. It says, religion is the opposite of being simple. It's complicated torturous. Religious religion says in effect, this is how to please God and satisfy Him. Go to this building, perform this rite, do this penance, mm -hmm. offer this sacrifice, fulfill this code, 
recite these words, agree with this creed, burn this stuff, candles, incense, flesh, money, whatever, pay this price, and God will accept you, up to a point. You'll be okay for a while, but you've got to come back and do more, because this stuff wears off. Wow. <laughs> that was powerful. That's perfect. I know, and, um, and, and that just, it, you mean, it, it, it just hit me, it's like, we did, that's what we did. You know, we, we said you had to do this, 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 and you had to do all this other stuff. And, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. we don't. Right. You know, we don't have to do all that stuff. As a matter of fact, that's the kind of stuff that really gets God angry. I mean, you have to think of it. When, when Jesus came down here, and he even got criticized mm -hmm. for it. Yes. When he came down here, I mean, you know, he was, as they put it in the Bible up there, I mean, you know, he was fellowshipping with... Uh, prostitutes and drunkards sinners and, and, and tax sinners. collectors which mm -hmm. at that time they were like the real bad dudes you just didn't even mess with them they yeah. were despicable and he was hanging out with all of them I think he even had a tax collector as a disciple but I mean he was hanging out with all of those and and the Pharisees were just like saying oh well yeah you're mm -hmm. a son of God or come from that you you know look what you do you hang out with all these the right. bad people and you know all this other stuff and I mean, that's, that's what Jesus did. And, and Jesus' response to that, when they questioned him on that, he just said, he says, well, you know, he says, I'm a physician. He says, yes. those that are, are you know, that if they're not sick, they don't need to be healed. Right. So he was going out trying to recruit all the people and right. tell them about that. Mm -hmm. The ones that ticked them off were the Pharisees. And these the were the people that, scholars, that right? did all the right things. They kept the tithe. They were there on the Sabbath. They did, you know, right. they did all the things and the, the commandments that the were law. given to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's good to do all the good things. Mm -hmm. The problem with it was they also included pride in that. And that was the mm -hmm. fly in the ointment, if you will. If they didn't have the pride, Jesus probably would have liked them. Because they mm -hmm. were doing, trying to do the right thing. Right. But they were trying to do it so that they could walk around and go, look at me, I do all the things that are right. God really thinks I'm special, I'm really good, because I do all these things. Mm -hmm. And that really just ticked off. That would be self-righteousness? Yeah. yeah, and and you know, that just does not fly with God. He just didn't want any part of that. Right. But, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, it's, okay, here's the thing. He made it so simple. I thought of this this morning too, um, in my God room. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe it was from God, I'm not sure. But between the two of us, we came up with this little okay. analogy. He said, he, he says, you know, if you, if you have one of your children that are lost, wouldn't you make it simple to come back oh, to you? That's great. And it's like, great. And I started thinking about that. I'm going, well, I gotta mm -hmm. put that into, you know me, I'm, I'm an artist. So I think in pictures and everything's gotta be illustrated. Right. So I'm thinking of it this way. It's like, okay, if your child, mm -hmm. your kid, is there's a train wreck, they're on a train, and they have a train wreck, and it's and it's hanging off the edge of a cliff, and it's ready to go over. Right. I mean, would you go up there to save your child and say, "Okay, Johnny, now what you have to do is you have to lean forward at 45 degrees, <laughs> you have to stand on one foot, hop." spin around and jump on your right foot when you land on this one rock over here, then do a backflip. You wouldn't do all that <laughs> stuff for him to get saved. Good point. What you would do is you would get as close as you possibly can mm -hmm. to that train wreck, okay? Mm -hmm. As close as you can to that train wreck with your arms out spread, out spread mm -hmm. and say, just jump, I got you. And see, that's what we do. We are all just like in, the, in that train wreck, it doesn't have to be our own kids. It could be mm -hmm. people we don't know. It could be also, and we're all standing on the edge of the bank, talking to the people mm -hmm. that are on the train wreck, and we're and we're saying, "Just jump! Jesus has got you!" Mm -hmm. And He's there with His arms open. All they have to do is jump. They don't have to do the backflips. They don't have to do so all this other stuff. That's where it's, faith enters in. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's. You know, is, is it just a matter of saying, oh, okay, well, then I'll just jump and that's it. Uh, you have, have to, to you know, you have to accept the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. I mean, let's put it this way. Okay, Jesus, I'm not that on his, just before he died, he proved that point, just how simple it was, mm -hmm. just before he died. 
he was hanging on the cross with two other guys mm -hmm. and they were all well both the other guys were sinners mm -hmm. and they were doing bad things they were criminals and what have you right. um, and, and everything else and they hung Jesus up there and he's in the middle of them and just before they were dying there the one turns to him and he says you know he says you know this man has done nothing not no I think it was the other guy that said well if you're, if you're a son of God you know tell us all to come down and the other guy says you know that this is the is the son of God that you know he he has, has done, done no wrong. nothing wrong not to be up here with us we have sinned we belong here he does not and then he told Jesus he says he says you know remember me when you enter into your kingdom and Jesus immediately said this day you should be in paradise mm -hmm. and that's how simple it was what did he do did he have to go say you know oh well hold told the fellows you know take me down from the cross here I have to go get baptized dunk in some water and I'll be right back mm -hmm. no he was a, and the reason was number one he had, he had repented yeah. he admitted that he was a sinner that's important okay mm -hmm. two he ad he acknowledged Jesus as Lord right. he said you know this day you know uh, I mean you know that you will be into your kingdom remember me so apparently he must have believed that Christ Jesus was the Christ yes. or he would not have said that so he, he repented admitted that he was a sinner and he asked you know acknowledged that Jesus was the Lord and then he you know he, 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 he accepted you know um, the Lord into into his life as short as it was mm -hmm. you know just before he, he passed on and that's all that was necessary and Jesus told him he said this day you be in paradise mm -hmm. and he didn't do anything else he didn't do the penance he didn't do you know uh, tied and didn't say, oh, wait a minute, i got to go give 10 bucks to the church before. I mean, he didn't have to do any of those right. things. Right. So Jesus proved the fact of just how simple it is to be saved. Right. Now, you know, of course, now the other thing is, you have to think when he gets up into heaven, um, you know, it says that there's things mm -hmm. that will be rewarded for, you know, whatever it is that we do for the Lord down here. Mm -hmm. Now, he died just before, so he's, there probably won't be a whole lot of reward, but just going into heaven yeah. and not going into hell is a pretty big reward. Right there, that would be enough for me to say, it's all yes. worth it, I, even all of this That's stuff. Right. I don't need the rewards. And there are so many people who are on their deathbed and they've lived yeah. a, a, a sinful life or they've lived even just a good life but they've never received Christ. Yeah. And right oh. there before they die, the only requirement is to accept the Lord Jesus, repent, accept the Lord Jesus, acknowledge Him. And they, they are they are able to go on into heaven. I mean, but the problem is that if you wait, if you wait till the end of your days, you are missing out on the relationship mm -hmm. and the yeah. fellowship and the friendship and the love of Christ. Um, the longer we wait, the more problems we have, the more sorrow we have, we don't walk in the victory that the Lord would have us walk in. So, you know, it's wonderful that it can be that simple. But they've waited till the end of their days to meet the Lord Jesus. Some of them do, and this fellow that was on the cross court so, did, but yes, you know, he was dying. He didn't have people. any choice, but other people do right. too. You know, the other thing that, that holds people up too, um, and it did me before I was a Christian. My, my wife has been a Christian since when? That little girl, as long little, as I little, remember. Little, little tiny girl. Yeah. Um, I was not. Uh, I was like 18. Actually, I was numb when I got out of the service. So that was uh, 21, 20s. 22, yeah. um, before I, I came to the Lord. But one of the things that that crossed my head a lot of times when I did think about doing, you know, going to God, was, and I think it crosses a lot of people's mm -hmm. mind, is they can't swallow the pill that tells them that they're not a good person. I kept saying, yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. You know, don't good people go to heaven? Right. And the Bible says in Proverbs 30, 12, it says, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Now we are, 
washed in the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's what purifies us. And yet there's, like it says, you know, there's a generation that in their own eyes thinks that they're fine, yes. they're okay. And that's what, you know, holds a lot of people up is the fact of like, you know, saying, well, you know, I'm not a drug dealer, I'm not a killer, I haven't, you know, raped anybody, I haven't done all this stuff, I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to God, there is no gray areas. This whole society is built on grays. Right, especially You know, we tr now. constantly compromise here and that to get into the gray mm -hmm. area. There is no right, there is no wrong. Well, there is a right and there is a wrong. And God very much says that. He is a black and white God. Mm -hmm. It either is or it is not. Right. There is no middle ground here, you know. And, you know, even though we may not be the worst of the worst, mm -hmm. Still, if we do any anything, um, you know, even have a, a impure thought, as, as fleeting as it might be, we have sinned, and any sin cannot come into heaven. So we need to be purified of that, mm -hmm. and there's no way of doing it except through Christ. So. Well, the sin that would keep us out is the rejection of God's sin, of God's Son. Mm -hmm. You know that Jesus came, and as we reject Him. Just rejecting him is sin, because can you imagine if well, you know sin, if yeah. it was your son and your son was going to save the world and he went through all of everything that Jesus went through, you know, and people rejected him. That's grievous. Yeah. Well, and you know, and I go back to the simplicity of it all. Yes. I mean, you know, we're talking about it, and we're talking about. You know, the basis of all of this, but you don't need to know all of this theology just to accept mm -hmm. the Lord. What you need to know is what do you really believe? Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of other people, matter of fact, I, I, I know one person that, that did this in, in my life over here, that I was a Christian and they wanted what I had. Mm -hmm. But I think she had too much pride and she just didn't want to let go of that, but she still wanted it, so what she did was she went and I, I guess she um, found what to say or whatever to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, come into my life, whatever. She said all the words and she told me the next morning, she says, you know, she said, well, I accepted the Lord. And you know, it, usually something like that, because uh, I know this person for a long time at that point, and I mean, my heart would have leaped with joy and whatever, and I didn't feel that. I, I tried to get that way because I believed what she told me was the truth, and she probably did do that, but it, my, the spirit inside me just did not confirm what she was saying. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, if I found out that, or it appeared anyway, I mean, I don't know if it was there, but it seems like that she didn't. And I think what she was doing was she th was taking it on like, okay, well, if I say these words, if I say that I accept the Lord Jesus Christ and I do all this other stuff, you know, and say that I'm a bit, I'm, I'm a sinner and I need to, have, if I, basically, if I say the words like an abracadabra, magic, and I'm saved. Mm. And it doesn't work that way. You, if you, <laughs> if you think you can fool God, that doesn't work. He looks at our hearts. Does he hear our, 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 our messages? Yeah, he hears our prayers, he hears the messages, but what he hears is what our heart is saying, not so much what our mouths are mm. saying. And so if, when you come to the Lord, you have to really believe that you are a sinner and that you really do need Jesus Christ, that you are lost and you need Him. Mm -hmm. And you have to really believe that He can save you. Not just say the right words mm -hmm. because, I mean, as, as my son is a, a Christian now, but before he was a Christian, I was talking to him and he said, it, it, probably like most people would say, it's like, well, you know, I think I'll do that because you know, if if it's not true, then I don't lose anything. But mm -hmm. if it is true, then you know I'm going to go to hell. Well, that's that's playing on the on the on the edge of the fence. That doesn't work that way. You know, you don't do it as a gamble. You either believe or you don't believe, and God knows whether you believe it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, so you really have to believe those words. You have to believe that that you are a you know, a sinner, and you need, you know, um, the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. Because it's the only way to do it. You can't do it by yourself. 
I mean, again, the Bible says on John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And also it says in Romans 10, 9, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And as a matter of fact, if, if you don't know the Lord, uh, we would, would like you to just repeat what we say. And it's important that you say it out loud. Um, because you do need to say it out loud. It has to be a spoken uh, confession, mm -hmm. which is another thing that's in here. But if you do want to accept the Lord, uh, just bow your heads with me right now and just let's just pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we accept you now, Lord. We know that we are a sinner and that we need you to cleanse us of our sins. And we know, Lord, that you are the only one that can do this and we come to you now and we ask you to cleanse us of our sins Lord and give us the salvation that we need and cleanse us with your blood Father and we thank you in Jesus name Amen mm. and that's it if you said those words and you didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ you are now a child of God. And the first mm -hmm. thing I would tell you is what I was told when I first yeah. accepted the Lord. Get a Bible if you don't have one and dig into it. The Holy Spirit will help you in understanding everything that's said there. But get the Bible. That's going to be your food. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have your food daily, just like if you don't eat daily, you will die. Mm -hmm. If you don't have your spiritual food, which is the Word of God, you will also spiritually wither away. So get a Bible and read it. And a church, a church family, find a church that and the you will be fed from that church and have the, uh, the fellowship that we all need. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's so, so important. And again, the other thing is spend your, your quiet quality a long time with God. Just yeah. get away someplace. It doesn't matter. Like I said, this morning it was in my bed. Usually it's in my back porch. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's in my car, just driving down the road. Wherever it's just you and God. And just talk yeah. to Him. He is a person. It's not just some little puff of smoke spirit thing out there. He's a person. All three of them. The Holy Spirit, yeah. Jesus Christ, and God themselves. And you can sit down and just talk with Him. And then take the time to just be quiet and listen mm -hmm. even if it takes a while just listen for what God will say back to you Amen. anyhow we we hope that you enjoyed the the broadcast and uh, we hope that you became a Christian that would be wonderful if you have give us a call uh, well Send drop an us email. an email um, it'll be coming up here soon on the screen and uh, we'd love to hear from you mm -hmm. and we might even read your letters on the air so until then have a good time and uh, and go into your God room often. Bye bye. There's nothing more important in life than your personal relationship with God. Nothing.